Hey guys, what's going on? You are listening to the Playing On Podcast. My name is Carl Markowski, and thank you for joining me on another episode. Uh, this one is with Patrick Spur from Monkey With A Gun. I have pretty much grown up on all of his films. They, it, it's, it's crazy how much they've inspired me, not just the soundtracks, but the, the videography and the cinematography that he has, uh, you know, that he has given the paintball community um, is just hands down some of some of the most influential and monumental uh, that that has impacted me anyway uh, in this game. And I, and I think a lot of people uh, can can say the same thing. And, you know, throughout uh, throughout Pat's career with Heroes for a Day and Serial Killers 1 and 2, uh, you also have Push, you have Sunday Drivers, which happens to be one of my favorite. Um, you, you just can't go wrong with a, a monkey with a gun film. So, um, so before we get to it, a couple words from our sponsors. Thank you to Punisher's Paintball. That's punisherspb.com. And if you type in the promo code TPOP at checkout, you will get free shipping. They are actually running a quick little like uh, discount thing they have. Well, no, it's not a discount. It's a trade-in program for the Spire 3. Uh, if you email them and give them a picture of what you have, they will compensate you for your loader. And then you will also have to pay, you know, whatever the trade-in value does not cover. And then they will send you a brand new Spire 3. So that is pretty sweet. That's Punisher's pb.com tpop for free shipping and check out that spire 3 program thank you punishers we're also brought to you by charm city paintball the head game guru mike thompson at charm city is busting out some awesome headgear he has uh he has tie wraps he has let's see he has velcro back head wraps he has all kinds of uh, fabrics and designs he has been putting out some amazing work and has been working with a ton of pros along with a ton of divisional guys out there. But uh, he, he's bringing back the, the high quality, heavy, dense fabric that everyone loves to rock. So uh, make sure you check him out, Charm City Paintball, Facebook and Instagram. Thanks, Mike. We are also brought to you by Carbon Paintball. And uh, they have been slowly but surely actually i wouldn't say slowly but surely but they have been coming through the ranks these past couple of years their underlayer has been phenomenal uh i wear the the bottoms and the tops for my knee and uh and elbow protection hands down some of the best i've ever worn uh doesn't move anywhere it i you know i, I sweat in it but I, i'm not super hot in it and the thing is is that when I play, I'm I'm rough, you know, and t pads tend to like slide back and forth, and with these, they they just don't move anywhere. They also have some awesome products uh, with packs. They have pants. They have jerseys. So make sure you check them out, CarbonPaintball.com. And if you type in the promo code capital T P O P for the Playing On podcast, you will get 10% off your entire order. Your entire order. So check them out. Also, if you guys have, have any inquiries about a sponsorship for your team, email me, carl at carbonpaintball.com, and we will hook you up. We will set up something, and uh, we will get you guys in some carbon gear. Uh, so thank you to Carbon. And last but not least, we are brought to you by Planet Eclipse, the makers of the sweetest markers on the planet. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little biased because I honestly have shot them ever since I started playing professionally. I think... Uh, the end of 2004 was the last time that I was shooting any other marker. And then 2005, the, uh, the ego was introduced and it changed everything. I mean, it, it, it was, uh, it was the very first rendition of the ego and it has just surpassed everything now with what they have with the with the cs2s and the and the e, and the lv 1.2 1.5 um these things are amazing it's a, it's an amazing company full of great people and uh and they've helped me a lot along the way and i'm glad to say that i am a part of um of what they're doing and i'm i'm glad to be able to help them continue to uh to help grow this sport so thank you to planet eclipse and to all of our sponsors thank you everyone for listening to all these crazy ads but um but if it wasn't for them you know that's 
a, a lot of this stuff that I'd be doing would be really, really hard to do. But we have some big switches coming up in the near future, so make sure you guys keep an eye out. Again, Patrick Spur, Spur? I can't even talk. Patrick Spur from, I said it again, Patrick from Monkey with a Gun. Here it is. Check it out. So what's up, man? What's new? Um, fuck, not much, dude. Just, just working and hanging out, and that's it. Just went surfing with my buddy. Yeah. Getting ready to cook dinner and and uh, and go hang out. But so, yeah, I've just been uh, just been working, just been working, doing webcasting like crazy. For the NXL or for uh... no no not not paintball related all 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 music festivals really yeah that's awesome yeah yeah it's cool I mean I've been doing that for a while now you know I mean that's sort of why I, I kind of you know well that's not really the reason why I, I stopped doing stuff for for uh, for the PSP back then but um, but yeah I mean. The minute the minute I started doing other webcasting, I started getting paid. You know, <laughs> started making money. <laughs> yeah. Well, so there's is, something said. There's something to be said about making money. You know. Well, why is I there mean, such why is there such diff, why is there such a difference um, between this paintball industry webcast and and the way that's run and the way that's produced or the, you know the way it is uh, compared to all the other ones that are out there that are actually you know making money and revenue and 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 a, a, a good product I, I think i think they're making i think they're making money dude on honestly from what I, what i've seen I, I think i think uh what darren's doing they're they're making money but i think they also have um they have a lot of um no i i think they're i think they're making money but i think they have a they have a lot of people they got to pay too you know what i mean yeah but but still, I mean, it's it's a big it's a big it's a big it's a it's a big undertaking. So you need a lot of people to help you to help you do it. You know, it's a production, yeah, yeah, for sure. I when you start like when I first started doing it for for Lane back in the day with the PSP, it was just it was Maddie and me and 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 you know and and people that we would beg, borrow, or steal to to come help us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we we worked twelve hours. 18 hours, you know, I mean, those guys are still doing the same thing, working long hours, but there, there were some nights where I didn't even sleep, you know what I mean? And then, then yeah. all of a sudden I do a webcast. And so that was tough. That was, that was, but I mean, um, uh, the, the, the nice thing about doing professional stuff is you get a lot more, you know, a lot more time, a lot more production time and people understand that, you know, to do it. But we were just, we were just back then we were just like trying to make it work and trying to get by with what we had, you know? Yeah. So, now whose idea it, was it to, to start the podcast initially or the, uh, the, the webcast. Podcast, the webcast. Uh, so the MPPL was doing webcast and, and, and I thought that was pretty, pretty lame. That was like the whole like Sean Walker error and that whole fucking nightmare. But, um, kind of commentary over playback. Yeah. Um, yeah, they well those guys were those guys came from like the surfing background so they weren't really like they didn't know anything at all about paintball so it was it was kind of lame um and then um and obviously i came from the documentary filmmaking side right and and um and basically i i you know i approached lane i said hey man let's 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 fucking let's do this good you know let's do this right and let's do this with with people that are that know paintball and and, and uh can do it yeah and uh he's he's like yeah let's do this you know what do we need to do this and and um and we we did it really fairly cheaply the f the first time but yet we still did it to you know and i was new at at live production back then that was like god what when was, was that 2006 you think that was 2005 maybe uh Man, let's see. It was World Cup. It was World Cup at Disney was the first one because I remember that was that was some sleepless, sleepless, sleepless nights. 
I think it was later. I, I think it was later in the or the early 2010s. I think the Oops. webcast came out because I know that when because I had stopped playing in 2000 and 2009, I had stopped playing, and then I think it was like 2010 or 2011. I saw that a a, you know, a webcast was started. Yeah, and it got me like stoked to like, like want to go back and actually start playing again. Oh, I think that's what it was. I could you be think wrong. it was that late? Uh, I, I think you, so. you might be right. You might, dude. I, I fucking don't know. You know, I don't know <laughs> when it started, but I, I remember it was it was early. It was early as shit. And um, I mean, dude. I mean, what? You know, I mean, Miko. I think was still playing for the Ironman back then. You know, yeah. why that was going on. You know, what I mean, that was. Uh, I think. The finals was all A's, and I forget who who else. I should know all this. But I'm so bad. I mean, you know what? It's trivia. 2009. It was 2009. Yeah, I think it was 2009. Oh well. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow. So you can you can you can look it up and do some research. Yeah, my fact checkers uh, will. Well, I'm sure they'll go. We'll over take it. care of that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I, I thank you. By the way, for doing this, I appreciate it. Oh, and um, so sorry, sorry for screwing you over so many times. Oh, I, no I, I sent I sent my calendar the other day for it, and I went for a, I went I, I was gonna go for a bike ride, and I totally totally forgot, and uh, my reminder went off when I went on a on a on a bike ride. I went for like a forty mile bike ride, and and uh, and it went off in my pocket, and I didn't even see it until I got back, and I was like, fuck. And then you text me, and I was like, "Oh shit!" I no, screwed it's him. all good, man. I, no, I, that sounds way more fun than sitting in front of a, a camera talking into in front of a microphone. Yeah, awesome bike ride. Um, but uh, you know, I, I I've actually you're you're one of the guys that I've always wanted to talk to. Um, because I've I've known you. I, I wouldn't say like on a very personal level. Um. But kind of, sorta. It's you know what I mean. I mean, we we know each no, other. No, dude, you but... used to hang out in my van every time I used to go up to Modesto to to film you guys. And like, like I was in my I was in my little like what was that that little Toyota four wheel drive van? And <laughs> yeah. you're like, yeah, I'm gonna ride with Patrick. I'm like, yeah, cool, hang out with me, dude. I've always, yeah, I was always like, I, I loved. Well, I I love paintball, but then I also loved the process of filmmaking and just filmmaking itself and that's that was one thing that i've always wanted to do and it was super intriguing your videos to me were were not only like a storytelling uh kind of platform it was very motivational for me it, it gave me this direction in in paintball and this motivation that i've never gotten from anything else and and a lot of videos now i feel are uh more like highlight reel ish yeah 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 where it's just kind of you're like here paint, the, paintball porno yeah i mean that's really all because it's a lot of slow motion a lot of close-ups <laughs> you know but it, there's no if there is a story being told it's being told in a you know five to 15 minute video um it, it, it's crazy you mentioned slow-mo because ck2 mm -hmm. had a, had a lot of slow-mo in it and that's before cameras could do slow-mo before <laughs> video cameras could do slow-mo Really? Right? Yeah. So every like a lot of people who are technical are like, wait, when did CK two get done? And I'm like, Yeah, it got done this. Like there wasn't any cam any video cameras that could do slow motion back then. How how did you do your slow mo? And I'm like, Yeah, I shot that all on sixteen millimeter film, high speed. So that was all that was all shot at two hundred to five hundred frames a second on sixteen millimeter film. So anyway. You don't hear that very often. No, <laughs> no, and I don't think people realize that, you know, or appreciate it. I, think. I mean, at the time they were like, "Fuck, that's cool." How'd you do that? You know? Yeah. yeah well, because yeah. I come from a film background, you know, all the when I used to work for Warren Miller Entertainment and all the skateboard films that I I used to do back in the day, all the Santa Cruz films, Wheels of Fire and Streets of Fire. Um, you can have your guys research that one as well too. Well, get on that. Uh, in, in 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 Wheels of Fire, um, <laughs> you, if you could look up uh, a clip, I was actually in that film. I was the uh, the mailman that delivered mail to Jason Jesse. Yeah. And why he was in jail because he got busted for skateboarding, you know, because it was a crime back then. Jeez, it was funny. 
Yeah. That's great. So, um, so let's let's go back because I want to kind of uh, delve into your into your uh, your past. And yep. how did um, you know how did filmmaking come into your life? Uh, filmmaking came into my life through surfing. Okay, so I started I started surfing. God, I started sur- uh, actually before surfing. I'll I'll go back real real early in my life because because um, my whole life has has pretty much been around sports. Mm-hmm. Um, and ever since I think I was ten or or maybe twelve, right around ten ten or twelve, I wanted to be a ski racer. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be Engelmar Stenmark, pretty much. That's who I wanted to be. And a water Engel- ski. Racer? Uh, no, 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 no. Um, snow skiing. Oh, okay. Snow skiing. So, um, and Engelmar Stenmark was 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 a great, great, great solemn skier, GS skier. Uh, I don't think he was a downhill skier, but I also wanted to do downhill as well, which downhill is scary as shit. Um, you, you go pretty fast, and oh yeah, you crash, you crash a lot. But anyway. In order to become a really good skier, you have to cross train, just like you have to cross train in paintball, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to be somebody at your at your level, you know, you're gonna you're gonna work out and you're gonna you're gonna cross train. The best way to co- cross train um, at an early age, I had a coach that was a cyclist, and he was a, a professional skier as well. So he would cross train in the fall, summer, winter. I mean, uh, um spring and he would cycle so we started cycling as well so i'm like yeah fuck you know let's do that yeah. uh builds up your quads builds up your muscles something that you use in skiing a lot for 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 turning um so yeah so started cycling it turned out that i ended up becoming a better cyclist than i was uh, was at skiing I, I did really well in skiing but i ended up becoming a better um, cyclist. I started racing in, in the summer times, and that was, and I toured all around New England, going to to races and bike races and stuff like that. And so you that's were where what, at the moment? Uh, in in New England, New in England? New England. So I, I went to boarding school as a kid. I was a boarding school brat. Um, I I started at the age of like ten, yeah. and the reason and the reason why I started at ten was because I was diagnosed with dyslexia. So basically at 10, I start seeing letters backwards. You know, I couldn't spell dog right without, you know, spelling it with a B or, you know, my E's and my B's would get confused. And, and so my dyslexia is, was off the charts, like terrible. Like I was pretty much, um, you know, close to being retarded. But so, um, my mom and my dad were like, well, there were these really good schools up in New England that were boarding schools that dealt with dyslexia. Mm-hmm. And so um, I ended up doing that. But thankfully, I did do that, uh, went to these boarding schools because my math teacher that I ended up, who was the downhill skier, was also my cycling coach and was also also uh, my ski coach as well. And uh, he, uh, he, got me, he got me into cycling. He got me into cycling racing. And then in the summertime, he had – a camp uh, called the New England Cycling Academy, and uh, I used to spend all my summers up there. Just like you know, you would probably go to paintball camp or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I was at cycling camp, and and we would just you know ride you know eighty to a hundred miles a day, and then do uh, do criteriums uh, all over New England. Uh, criteriums are basically races, bicycle races around a city block. Um, and they're real fast, man. It's like if you're a sprinter, you love criteriums, you know what I mean? Mm. You just love criteriums. Um, not like what's going on right now on the t- television, the tour de France. I don't know if you've watched any of the tour de France, but mm. the tour de France, I think is in the fifth, fifth stage or fourth stage, fifth stage today. Um, are those just different legs of the race? Uh, so tour de France is basically, uh, is basically stage racing. So a criterium is a one day race. It's around a city block. It's fast. It's around sharp corners. Um, they put hay bales around the corners, not because they're afraid you're going to crash because they know you're going to crash. Yeah. Uh, it's just gnarly. It's just your lot of elbowing, you know, 
racing, you know, rubbing is racing, you know I mean? Yeah. It, it's, it's a lot of fun, man. It, it's a lot of fun, but it, it is, it is kind of hairy. Um, so yeah, we would do a lot of those and, uh, and man, I got good at it and I loved it and I loved the speed and I loved, uh, I loved going around the corner and I was a really good sprinter. So I would win a lot and, and that was amazing. You yeah. know, I raced on a team called, uh, Sto Shimano, which that was the junior level team. And back then that, that team was the shit, you know, that the, there was, there was a senior team called Panasonic Sto Shimano, which was, um, which was like all my heroes, like Chris Carmichael, Bobby Weir, uh, all these guys that were just, um, were just awesome. And then there was also, um, the Seven Eleven team, which had Eric Hyden in it. Eric Hyden was a speed skater mm-hmm. and he was in his, his, uh, sister Beth Hyden would race in the women's category. And I, it was just, it was just, it was a lot like, a lot like paintball, you know, everybody knew each other and everybody would show up for the, for the races, just yeah. like everyone shows up for the tournaments and, and hammers it out. So, um, so anyway, to get back to your, your original question was how I got involved in filmmaking was, uh, I came back one summer, I think my senior year, and I've been racing and racing and racing and as a junior. And I came back one summer uh, from New England and uh, I hung in my, my parents live in Florida. So I, I hung out in Florida with my parents and I met a lot of really cool kids that were surfers, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so this was before my senior year. Um, and so that summer they're like, hey, man, come up come up coast with us and we're going to go surfing and camp out. And I'm like, sure. That sounds like, like great time started doing that. And I was like, Oh shit, man, this, what have I been doing, man? What have I, what have I been doing hanging up in new England all summer racing and shaving my legs and hanging out with guys? I'm all, <laughs> could be on the beach with, with these girls surfing. Yeah. It's like, fuck that, th- this is insane. And, and surfing was so much fun, dude. And I just, I just, just grabbed hold of that and was like, this is all I want to do, man. I all I want to do is surf. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I stopped, I stopped racing. I kind of regret that now as I look back, but, but back then that was the right thing to do. You know what I mean? That mm-hmm. was the, and I was burnt, man. I was racing so much that, that, um, that I just burnt myself out. But, um, but yeah, I started surfing and all my friends surfed and I ended up then convincing my dad that uh, my senior year I could go to public school in, in Miami, Florida. So I went to Coral Gables High uh, for my senior year. And I basically spent spent half the year just surfing, you know, writing my own notes, you know, and not mm-hmm. really. Because, I mean, here I was in boarding school, you know, that was, was kind of hard. And then I was at public school. And not to take anything away from public school, but it was, it was pretty easy to get through public school, you know? So, so I, I, whenever there was surf, I, I was up the coast with my friends and, um, and then that started me also traveling, looking for surf. So we'd, we'd go down to Costa Rica, we'd go to, uh, we'd go to a, um, Puerto Rico, we'd go all over Panama, everywhere to, to go surfing. And, um, especially Costa Rica, we'd go to Costa Rica a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. And I remember going, fuck, I'm going to all these cool places. I need to document this. I need to start, you know, film, filming this stuff. Yeah. And um, back then, you know, there were, video cameras were were kind of bulky, kind of lame, kind of whatever. So I picked up, I went to, uh, there was, there. I was living up in, um, I started living after I graduated out of high school and I decided that I needed to start documenting this. I was living up in Daytona Beach. And there was a guy in Daytona Beach. There was a place called Daytona Beach Beach Cameras or whatever. And there's this guy named, I think his name is Russ Atwood or Russ, I, I forget. Anyway, he ran, he basically ran the, um, the, um, the, the surfing competitions in, in the Daytona Beach segment for the NSA, so the National Surfing Association. Mm-hmm. And, and all my friends used to I wasn't really into competing surfing I was I mean I am kind of competitive but all my friends were doing it so I'm like yeah sure I'll I'll do it you know yeah started competing and surfing and started doing that uh and so we'd go to all the NSAs but anyway I was talking to Russ because he that was his day job was working at the camera store I'm like hey man we're starting to go to Costa Rica uh had a good friend of mine Jay Smith who still lives up in Daytona shapes boards up there pro one of the pro surfers up there 
had a surf shop called the beach club and um uh, i talked to russ and i'm like hey man i want to um i want to start filming stuff and he's like all right hey i'll get you a super eight we got some used super eight cameras you know and then we can transfer it to video and then you can edit it or you can edit your video your film right there so i'm like i knew nothing you know i, mm-hmm. I was totally inexperienced so I'm like, yeah, cool. Super 8 camera sounds great. I got a water bag for the Super 8 camera too so that I could take it out and shoot in the water. Yeah. And that was the right way to do it. I, and I learned so much after that. But but that was that was my first start at, at filmmaking. And um, and I, I, I spliced it all on uh, – on super eight. So I would just, you know, reel to reel, look at the, look at like a little tiny scope and then cut it together and little, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And then I made my own soundtrack on a mixtape and then tried to sync it together, tried to like, okay, press play, press play here. And it wasn't in perfect sync at all, you know, yeah. but it was just, none of my cuts were cut right to the music or anything like that, but it was just, you know, and then I had commentary to it and it was like, super rudimentary there's no youtube back then you know nothing like that so yeah. it's like you had to you had to like you had to either know somebody who, who knew what they were doing or um or try to go to film school you know but film school was like you know ucla or you know usc or you know yeah. I, I tried going i tried going to to um there was a community college in miami that had kind of a film program but Dude, I, I went to that for one term, and I knew way more than that. I mean, the teacher that was teaching was a sound guy, and it was a film class, and he was just a sound. He was a sound guy in film, but he kind of knew what he was doing. But right. but it was like you know, he didn't really know what he was doing. You know, so it was tough. You know, I mean, and so now on the internet, you can. I mean, dude, all you have to do is is just you know. If you have a question, all you have to do is just Google it and, and look it up. And, and there's a thousand videos on how to do lighting, how to do mm-hmm. sound, how to do, you know, talking about depth of field, talking about everything. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's that, that barrier has gone away. But anyhow, so I, I did this film. Uh, we made, we made, uh, I made VHS copies of all of it, VHS back and then, gave them all my friends. And like I said, my buddy Jay and and Chuck, who was who were the two pro surfers that owned a surf shop in Daytona, um, put it in their they back then they used to rent videos, surf videos, you know, yeah. like professional surf videos, and they put it in their little collection and they 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 were renting out their own home my home movie that I made of them and us surfing all over Costa Rica. So that was cool and people were actually like digging it, you know. That's awesome. Um and so yeah, so that was cool. And then I met this this guy in Daytona Beach named Paul Pruitt who actually filmed some professional stuff, sixteen millimeter stuff. And this guy was like a genius at making water housings. Like, like he would make fiberglass and then plexiglass plates and then um, for bolexes and and stuff like that. And so, I I just latched onto this guy and just learned as much as I could from him. And um, and then uh, he used to work for this guy named Scott Dietrich, who did all these surf films: Gone Surfing, Follow the Sun. Uh, um, God, what are some of the other ones? Uh, that he did, um, gone surfing was, was pretty much his, his, his big one. Um, and, yeah, but anyway, so I ended up moving out to LA and then hooking up with him and, and then we got the, he got a job, uh, doing the Santa Cruz videos, uh, wheels of fire and streets of fire. And, um, I was seeing as I, I was skateboarding all the time. I did all the, uh, all the shots where there's movement and following skate. Like I was following with a camera on a, on a, skate, on a skateboard, 16 millimeter camera, not a six, you know, not video like you see now, like all the kids do now. But I was like one of the first guys to, to actually get on a skateboard and actually film, film. Uh, there's some, actually some really good shots in Santa Monica of, of not as um, uh, doing, 50 50 grinds and 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 rail slides on this like slippery curve that that they used to have on the boardwalk there um in santa monica and, and that stuff was pretty cool but yeah there, there was some fun stuff man fun fun skateboarding stuff 
so that that got got into that and then um then I got then I ended up getting a gig with uh Warren Miller and I did a, a lot of uh Hollywood stuff too like I worked on uh worked on Baywatch worked on a show that was like the level down from Baywatch it was called Pacific Blue do you ever remember that one yeah, it was it got it's like M- Mario who's that that guy from like Lost Lost with the Bell or I'm Saved or, by the Bell <laughs> Saved by the Bell that that guy but this was like okay Mario Lopez Mario Lopez. Yeah. It was him. He was a cops on bicycles running through Venice Beach. So, yeah, that it was real cheesy, dude. But the funniest thing, and I was playing paintball back then, right? That's when I was playing paintball, right? But the funniest thing ever is that um, uh, one of uh, one of the uh, the the shoots we were doing, they're like, okay, we're gonna have, we're gonna bring in the ballistic guy to. Uh, to simulate like shots being fired um, that like hit you know hit hit the wall or something like that and and then looked like they burst so they brought out a fucking Tipman right a Tipman gun with these with these uh, uh, I I want to say they're like resin acrylic balls and in it was powder right yeah. and they shoot these next to the actors right and it was like this hard acrylic uh, and they're not ball. that accurate. <laughs> They're not that accurate, and and this guy's shooting them to, towards the pit, and they're hard, right? So if it just hit the actor, it w- it would hurt them if it hit their eye. But these things would hit the wall, and then this acrylic would break. Yeah, and these little chips would like you know like if it like I couldn't. Be- I'm like, yo, this is really really unsafe. I mean, I play paintball, and I I know better than to to start. You know, no, yeah. no, I know what I'm doing. I'm I'm like, it's not that accurate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like oh, so, geez. that was that was a cool that was a, a neat experience. But um, so how did you find paintball in this in this whole? So thing? then 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 I got I got hired by Warren Miller Entertainment to work full time, and they their offices were in Hermosa Beach, California at the time, mm-hmm. and they they were like, you know what, we're going to move to Boulder, Colorado, and um, how would you like to move with me? And I'm like, fuck, I surfed all the time, and I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. You know, Col- Colorado's cool, Boulder's cool, can ride my bike i can cycle you know that that'd be great um but then i got there and i'm like man you know yeah there's there's great stuff to do here and and this is great uh but then then the um there were there were two owners of the time there peter speaks and kurt miller kurt miller is obviously um warren miller's son uh, he ended up buying the company from his dad. His dad didn't give it to him. He had to buy it from his dad. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then Kurt Miller. But anyway, Kurt Miller was like, came up to me one day and was like, "Hey, we're gonna have this uh, paintball, um, paintball day where we're gonna compete against another office, another one of their offices. And there's this uh, paintball. There's a couple paintball places in, in, um, in Denver at the time." Uh, I want you to go check them out and see what you think. Well, one of them was called uh, Z War Zone, and it was an indoor, um, uh, and it was like at nighttime. It was indoor. Um, they were selling paintballs in, in by ten paintballs in a tube. You know what I mean? For like, uh, I think they had stingrays at the time so it was Mm -hmm. co2 cartridge stingray and and dude those guys were killing it they were selling they were selling co2 cartridges and and paintballs you know 10 to 10 10 paintballs for i don't know how much but it was expensive you know um so i went there and then i think there was there was another place down further on down um that was an outdoor place and, and i checked it out but anyway i got i got checking it out i got hooked i'm like wow this is this is cool you know and then um, I ended up doing it more and more, and you know, reading magazines, and ended up uh, ended up meeting a bunch of kids that were there, uh, that were that were super cool. I ended up being becoming really good friends with those guys, and they were on a team called the Yard Dogs, which uh, which went back to um, 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 uh, one of the guys, Dwayne, who had a had a uh, a shop called Global Impact, I think it was called. Mm-hmm. I forget, dude. That was a long time ago. Was this but, not uh, like like late nineties? Yeah, yeah. Mid to late nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Late, late, late nineties. Uh, like 
96, 97, right around there. And, um, and then we ended up, we ended up doing some tournaments, uh, just local tournaments and stuff like that. And then, uh, um, met Scotty Flint, who, uh, who ended up being a pretty good dude, uh, despite what everybody says. But, um, and he started, he, we, took half the yard dogs and his and his guys and we created a team called Fury. I don't know if you remember Fury back in the day. No, I, not not too much. There's nothing really memorable there. <laughs> <laughs> but we we had fun. We had fun and we had a good time anyway. Yeah. And then and then uh and then I met Frank in the family hmm. and uh and I was I was the fifth member of the family. So it was Frank uh, Frank Watson, Su- Susie Watson, um, Keely. Ryan and Keely. And, and then it was me and we, and did, we had a block. I you had were a the adopted one. I was the adopted one. <laughs> I was, I was the adopted one and I ended up having, having, a, having a great time just, just playing on the family. Um, and so then, um, now was film, were you filming and documenting still at, at this point? So I was I was working for Warren Miller and I was I was shooting film sixteen millimeter film I had an Airy SR high speed mm-hmm. uh, doing that stuff so I wasn't really filming paintball then but um, were you doing personal stuff though at all or uh, just work not not really but what I what I did do is is uh, is Frank Frank was having a tournament um, down at his field he had a field down in Colorado Springs and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, hey Frank, you know, uh, we got this. We that's just when video cameras just started coming in, right? You know what I mean? Like, actually, you know, H. Well, I don't know. It wasn't even HD. It was just you know, video cameras started coming in, yeah. but it they they were digital back then, so it wasn't analog anymore. It was digital, right? It was like Sony came out with, uh, I don't know, a VX. 1000 or some shit like that i forget what it was but it was a digital camera right and, yeah and i was like wow this is crazy it's gone digital it's you know and so i i borrowed that camera and i said hey i'll come down in in film and film your uh film your tournament and we'll make a little video and 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 see what happens and brian benini actually was good friends with those guys because because we were a die team and stuff like that Mm-hmm. And Brian was working for for Die at the time, um, and then uh, he came out, and uh, I did the video, and then Brian ended, up, and I met Brian, and we hung out, and uh, and then uh, he ended up seeing the video, and it was just some little little video that I put together pretty quick, put some cool music to it, and everything like that, and he was he was blown away. He was like, "Wow, this is cool, dude! You put this together so quickly, you know." Mm-hmm. And then we started talking, and then. Um, and uh, and um, I ended up moving, uh, quitting Warren Miller just because I, I was tired of, of of not surfing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ended up moving back to LA, and uh, and then and then I, I kept a hold of Brian, and Brian's like, "Hey, let's let's uh, let's think about doing a documentary." You know what I mean? And and because uh, it, you know, because I was I was constantly like, "Hey, man, there's some." There's some characters, you know, in paintball from from going to tournaments and stuff like that. I go, dude, we could document this, and this would this would be great. And he's like, yeah, let's do this. Um, and then that we created that uh, company called Division One, um, yeah. which which Push was our first video that we did. So um, and that was bas- basically uh, shot um, before World Cup, and then during World Cup, and then. And then uh, I edited it all from there, so um, that was cool. And then then uh, then we did Sunday Drivers, which was my favorite. You like that? That's and then, that's my favorite one. That, and uh, and then after that, I ended up, I well I, I moved down during during push. I ended up moving down to San Diego and and just just living moving in with brian and just um i set up my whole editing rig because back then it wasn't just like you couldn't edit films on a laptop you know what i mean you had to have like a specific system to cut video back then it was like you know computers weren't weren't as as good as they are today um so yeah you needed you needed a pretty beefy system and it was like 20 grand just just to have a system you know what i mean 
and I ended, I had an editing system that I've been using for commercial work and stuff like that that I was doing up in LA. So I brought my whole system down, uh, set it up in his living room, and just started you know started filming and and, and started hammering away on, on that stuff. Um, did Sunday Drivers. Um, still was living with Brian um, and hammered away on that one. Um, that's when right around there I started dating Bonnie from mm. JT. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then we ended up, we ended up getting married. Um, and, bro- and then her and I became monkey with a gun. So we created a company called monkey with a gun. And the first film that we did, uh, with, um, monkey with a gun was uh, serial killers. Very close. Second favorite in my book. <laughs> oh yeah? yeah. Serial killers. Yeah. And then uh, after Serial Killers, I I did a um, I did Heroes for a Day, which you were a part of. Uh, I love that one too. It, it, there's so many. Yeah, that's and I, that I, and that was that was that was Maddie approaching me with Davy Davy Williamson, mm-hmm. and they they were like, Hey, here's the deal, dude. Like, you're a really good filmmaker, and we're gonna put together this team that's gonna be epic, and it's breaking all the rules that any other team has, has, has gone by and this is what we're going to do. And what do you think? We want you to document it. And I'm like, all right, first of all, this is pretty much the project that my dream project that I want to do that I've always wanted to do ever when filmmaking. I want, I want to shoot, I want to shoot history as it's happening, not, not put together history later and then talk about it, you know, how great it was when it, when it, I, I want to film this while it was happening. Yeah. But yeah. here's the first thing I told them, I go, dude, I'm going to be putting my own money into this. Obviously there's, there wasn't a lot of sponsors to, to cover this. You're covering one team. Um, the sponsors are all that they were getting, were already covering, you know, you got your travel, you know, yeah. so yeah. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot. So it was basically, is basically I was basically putting putting money out of our own pockets just to do this, but that was a project that that I really want to do. But you got to promise me that you guys are going to deliver on what you on on your like, you know, how many people have you heard? Hey, let's start this team, and then you know a year later it just you know goes to shit, and you know, and Half that. The but team is committed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like it's like. You know, and and at the time, like Dynasty was pretty much, you know, the pow- was the powerhouse. Like nobody could go up against Dynasty. Nobody really. I mean, they were so so dominant that it was so it it was almost it was almost impossible what they were what they were asking to do. You know, yeah. especially with especially with uh, you know, with with starting from scratch and starting on their own with no you know, with no real major brand backing them, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, really. I mean, that whole that whole excessive energy drink thing kind of fell apart. And Yeah, I, I mean, I, honestly, I don't know how Rich did it. You know, I don't know how, how all those guys, you know, pulled it together. I know nobody, nobody was really getting paid, you know? Mm. So, you know, I mean, yeah, they'd buy you tickets and stuff like that to fly out there, but you weren't getting paid any money, you know? That was it. Yeah, that was it. I mean, yeah. I got travel paid for, and other than that, I mean, I know I know with me being so young and, and getting on the team and everything, I know there were, uh, I think there were contracts and there was some money promised as far as other players go, but I wasn't involved in any of that. My, I mean, I was way too early in my career to even be have a contract or have anything like that i was more or less along for the ride at that point um you know and i wanted to tell you this too is like one one thing that kind of solidified my okay i'm i'm actually like here and i'm making some kind of a difference i'm I'm doing something was when uh when you made that headband for me oh sweet dude you know that was like that was such a big like turning point in my career of like ha- kind of having all of this mean something, you mm-hmm. know, just that little, that little thing, which, was, <coughs> which was big to me. And, um, I, I still have the one that you sent me down in the package and everything. It's sitting down uh, next to my studio down in the basement. I, I look at it awesome. every day, but it's awesome. Yeah. It's, it, it that was huge for me. And, um, being able to watch your films and then, 
you know, be able to talk to you about them and even talk to you about personal stuff. I know I talked to you about personal things too, um, that I was going through back then and, and you helped me out a lot. And then being able to watch your films and talk to you was just, it was amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I think what you've done for paintball and the media, like paintball media and film. And, uh, I think my generation has, been so lucky to be able to see that and i don't know i really hope if anybody who's listening or watching please go back study watch these films um not only for entertainment but just for and and, and i'll get i'll get i got um push on youtube right now i'm gonna get every all my videos on my youtube channel so i mean and so they're free there for anybody to to watch um so yeah i just want you know them to be there for free you know for people you know and that's if awesome. you see if you see any commercials in front of it that money is not going to me at all that's actually going to all the um the bands that are in in uh youtube does that so they'll put they'll automatically put commercials in front of it uh so if you see that that's what that is is basically um this was way earlier than youtube so there was no like contract written as far as yeah. like youtube stuff so the robots automatically listen to that music and go oh this is a licensed track you know what i mean yeah so we're automatically so that i get these net messages saying we're automatically putting commercials in so that we can pay the artists and and honestly the artists need to be paid because Absolutely. because there there's some there's some great music there and and that's what that's all about and some people from europe are saying oh i can't watch it because some of the um, the copyrighted material won't um, in certain countries in Europe won't allow you to to watch it on YouTube. So hmm. the only the only work around there is get a VPN and and act like you're from the states and yeah. and, and, and watch it that way. So yeah, well, uh, well, that's, that's the only other way. But there's there's nothing I can do about that. But that's awesome. I'm 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 glad that it's that it's out there because I've I still have all my copies. I don't. I think I have all. I have my push copy, my Sunday drivers, my. I don't have a serial killers two. Um, I have. I have a one. I have my heroes for a day. I'll send you. So I got serial. Kill, I don't have. I don't have any more push. I don't have any more Sunday drivers. I think I got one copy in the shrink wrap, and I'm just gonna keep that just for oh, yeah. you know, for for whatever. Uh, but I'll, yeah, I'll send you CK two for sure. Oh, that'd be that'd be awesome, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Another. Th- I mean, I don't weird... DVD though. You know, I mean, like, who watches DVDs anymore? I have a DVD player. I'm a weirdo. Do you really? Yeah. Shh. Wow. I, I have to. Me. I have to take it out and plug it in because it, it doesn't stay out. It just for yeah. <laughs> I got asked the other day. Hey, can you make a DVD of this webcast for me? I want to see it again. I'm like, dude, it's online. <laughs> like, you Sign want me to make you a, You want me to make you a DVD of? The webcast that we webcast it, and it's on VOD, and you can actually watch it on. Yeah, you know, in case I get people to come over, I go, like, don't you have a like? Every everything is on the internet now. It's like, yeah, yeah you know, like the the days of like I used to have a col- collections of DVDs on all around my walls. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. You know, the days of that are over, man. Well, there's something nostalgic about physically no, having there, something. There, you know? There is, but but yeah, I I kind of I kind of got over that. Yeah, you know, it's I nostalgically almost... have my old bicycle up there on the wall, hanging up on the wall. That's a piece of artwork, though. Yeah, that is. That's that's that was one of my my frames that didn't get didn't get bent into pieces at a bicycle race from back in in the eighty three nineteen eighty three. It's a steel steel frame. It's cool, man. I got it. I got it repainted and rechromed and. Looks just nice. have it hanging up there, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what was your favorite film to make? Uh, he- Heroes for a Day, absolutely. Hands down. That, 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 yeah, that was that was, and like I said, I, I, you know, that was the the stipulation. It's like, dude, I'll deliver on this film if you guys deliver on your promise to, to, to be the 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 story and be the team that you want. And every everybody delivered. Dude, there was so much. There was so much going on there. So much drama and so much stuff. You know. It's like it's it's crazy every time I see Rich Telford at, at you know because I I don't go to many paintball tournaments unless you know unless Darren you know calls me up and goes hey we need you here to help us with encoding or help mm-hmm. us get a satellite signal or 
you know, help us do something. Or the last one I did in, in Texas was he just had his kids. So he is, I guess his wife had him on lockdown, you know, yeah, <laughs> didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't want him to travel. So I went in and filled in for him and, and that was, that was fun. But every time I see those guys, it's like, I, I look, I look at them and I'm like, fuck, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, I want, I want to start crying, you know, cause it's like, it felt, it feels like we, we went through, we went through a battle together, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And it's like some, it's like something you don't really like, I mean, you have friends, right? But when you go through those, 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 those hard times and there's just so much, you know, hitting your head against the wall, it like, you know, it's like, it, it feels way more important, you know? Yeah. So I wish I could have been more involved than, than what I was, man, I was a broke ass kid not uh, you know living out of state playing for a team that was out of california yeah you know it was it was so tough and i I know you got a lot of footage of the guys like behind the scenes stuff and i it sucks i couldn't make it to make it to a lot of it but yeah yeah that's i mean that was that was weird for me too you know that was the first team that i that i got on where it was like real serious and and out of state and it was it was high level and they were exercising and going to the gym and mm-hmm. running and working out. And yeah, it was cool, man. It was cool. It was definitely cool. And paintball was never it's... like that before. You know, from from the stories that I've heard, yeah. I mean, I only started playing in 2000, like late 2002, 2003. I mean, the stories that I heard, it was like, it was a man's sport going, you know, an older man's sport. They went out there yeah. and they played and everything. And, um, you know, and it wasn't until what was um what was rich's yeah like it, like push you know it was like rich was just a kid back then you yeah. know what i mean and, and like and all and like you know and like all the older guys you know they were just like beer drinking hunting you know go out and play paintball and you know you had you know little kids like marcus back then that were on you know mm-hmm. <laughs> that were on aftershock and they were just you know they were like you they were just you know they were just like, hey, send him to the fifty, you know, and he's gonna get blown apart. But that's that's what we need him there. We need him to turn guns. That's all we need him to do is turn guns. You know? yeah, and it was, you know, it were it was those integration of generations that slowly changes the game in in every sport in anything, you know, mm-hmm. where, you know, you know, they have this the older guys and the older generations have this idea that you know that they're used to. And they kind of go along with, and then that new yeah. generation brings in this other idea, and you know loads it on top of that, and then you know all of a sudden now you have X ball, and you have running and shooting, and you have, um, you know all, what we have today. So where where's paintball now, Carl? That's a great turn, question. Turning turning the turning the interview around. Where's paintball now? That's a good question. Because you know? I, I take a look, I take a look at it now, right? And I always, I, you know, whenever I I go back and I I look at it and I'm like, you know, do do I want to come back and do another film? You know, do I do I want to do another film? And I look at it and 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 I, I mean, not to take anything away from it, but in it, I just might not be into it. But I remember when I first got into paintball, like I knew right away that there were fucking stories there. You know what I mean? Like, who are these characters? There is this fucking guy named Rocky Cagnoni walking around, you know, just, you know, just being funny as shit. There was, mm-hmm. you know, Lasoya was funny. Um, I mean, dude, there were, everybody had these these distinct Mark Knopf. That guy was, I mean, everybody just had these d- distinct personalities. I mean, even Ed Portman had his own personality, you know, that was like, yeah. you know, Richmond Natalia was there. He had his own personality. Lane did. Um, Dude, I mean, it was, it was just, it was, there was, there was all these, you know, and, and I didn't have to really get in deep to know these guys to, to figure that out. Mm -hmm. I could just see it because it, it was just bubbling. It was just overflowing. It was just, you know, it was just out there. And I just, I, I don't see too much of that. I see a lot of, I see a lot of, of, of personalities that are, that, are kind of cloned, you know what I mean? That are, that are, that are, per, that are pretty much, you know, everybody else, you know, I mean, every now and then there, there's somebody out there, but, but it's just, it just seems like it, it just, um, it just got too involved as far as, as far as trying to be, um, 
a real sport, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it got too hardcore. And I mean, honestly, some of that has to do with, with the approach excessive took, right? Cause they were trying to turn it into a sport too. Right. right. But, right. but yet I, I think, I think people have to realize that, man, honestly, paintball is, is an entertainment sport. Really? I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but it is, it's, it's entertainment. Go out there and have fun, man. Just have fun, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just, I mean, you can be, you can be at the highest level or whatever, but you got to go out there and, and have fun, man, and enjoy it, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause if you, if you just go around beating your head up against the wall and just, you know, just pissed all the time that you didn't score that point or got shot or whatever, you know what I mean? And didn't, you know, just, you're with your, you're with your friends, man. Have, you know, you should, you should be having the time of your life. And that's that's what it should be about. And when I start seeing that again, then that's when I think I'll be interested in the sport again because I think that's you know that's what made uh, push so cool. That's what made Heroes for a Day so cool. You know, mm-hmm. Heroes for a Day was a struggle. So, but but yet you know you guys still still had a good time. You know what I mean? And, and there were still characters there. You know? Oh yeah, it oh, was, yeah. we were so close, and yeah. um, the the camaraderie and the 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 main goal it was yeah. you know it was it was very very visible and you know going back to what i think paintball what i think paintball kind of has turned into or what it is today um you know you bring up a good point of all the other guys and and the older scene where you have these individual characters that that stood out not they didn't stand out because uh they had YouTube channels and all this stuff and you followed them and it's not it or just, purple hair or something like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they were just these characters that you saw at tournaments and, and the atmosphere was different. And and now yeah. there's so much more seriousness to yeah. it and, and just you're there to do a job and this is what it is. I'm not saying go there and, and, and 10 man it up where you're, you know, drinking beer through the whole thing and this and that. I mean, there has to be some kind of, you know, some kind of line drawn, uh, drawn in the right, sand. For sure. <clears throat> but, um, but at the same time, it's like, we're, we're losing that, that atmosphere. We're, we're losing it and it's dwindling. I don't know if it's because the, uh, the venues themselves now have, or, or the trade shows have gone down and there's not really much of a, you know, there's a very few kind of big tents rather than a whole bunch of little ones and a couple big tents and everything. And, and, uh, you know, yeah, you get to talk to the pros now and then, but, now I feel like a lot of the pros and top guys, they want to go there, watch some games, play their games, and then go back to the hotel. Yeah. When I feel like back then, you would run into everybody because everybody was hanging out no, at the every, booths. Every, and... Everybody would hang out at the fields. And, and yeah. like, like, dude, Planet Eclipse used to be, like, brilliant about, you know, making aim, making heaven and, you know, like having a jacuzzi. In, oh, in... you're talking about uh, WDP. Yeah, WDP. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, WDP. <laughs> yeah, but well, the thing is too is like well, this. I think the sport itself has changed as well, um, going from the the ten man to to seven man to X ball, and now I mean I've I've made this argument uh, a, a ton of times. I feel like the individual skill of the player has has become this. Uh, this line, this level line, with with the ramping set at a certain, um, you you can only go so far, right? You can only go so far, and and now everybody everybody who's this good as far as gun skills and everything like that, everybody who's this good has to be dumbed down a little bit, and everybody who's this good at right. their gun skills now comes up to that even playing uh, level field, Dude. and I, I wanted to go back to semi auto. I, I think yeah. it can be regulated now. I think I think and and and, and also not 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 playing the fields until the day up like that, that 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 was a brilliant thing like 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 if you were a smart motherfucker you saw shit that nobody else saw and you then you would the pull that, you, you created that move like chris was fucking brilliant about creating moments oh, yeah. you know what i mean like he would create he would see shit that nobody else would see on a field and just by walking the field and then he would he'd like i think this is crazy but i'm going for it and he would do it and he would just he would he would you know it 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 sometimes it would work but most of the time it did you so know and it no was really that. that was the stuff that you would sit around and go oh my god you know and you watch cheer for it. yeah yeah 
You know what I mean? You you want to see you want to see those incredible things. So, I mean, and, and I understand why they do that. Why they why they put the fields out. The the field owners make money. People come play the fields and stuff like that. It's a financial thing. But honestly, um, but for I, five I, events a year, five yeah. events a year. You're you're. I mean, they're making. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm completely ignorant on it. But I don't think I don't think with five events a year having those two weekends before because the teams aren't going to play the weekend of the tournament. They're going to be at the tournament. So it's just the two weekends right. before. And then how many months in between? I don't know. Maybe they are. But, you know, you you, you don't see. But back, back in the back in the day, we, I mean, people would practice the same thing, right? No, nobody would not people's practice people. and, then, and then go to a tournament like yeah. they would practice. They would practice their, their skills and they would they would, you know, like. Uh, have the fields just create some fucking crazy field and let them walk it. And then now they're learning how to walk fields again. You know, now, now they're, yeah. they're, they're adding something to that. They weren't able to add in a skill set instead of, you know, a coach showing them a diagram where they're going to shoot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like now what? everybody's walking the field half ass because they've played a similar field for the last yeah. two weekends. And now they're looking over, uh, you know, key things that might have changed because the fields are always different at the tournaments than, than what they are, yeah. than what you practiced. So, yeah. you know, some may push that and be like, hey, well, you really need to walk this field. But it's like, you know, I, I, I think, you know, even through the divisions, I think ego starts coming into play. And now well, I don't need to walk a snake as well. I, I played it really good at practice. And, you know, I know all the shots and this and that. It's like, no, you don't. But where if you you didn't see the field until Thursday – or whatever it is, you have to walk that field. You have to find the bounce. Oh my God, the fucking bounce shots now. You know, people are practicing those bounce shots, and and nobody and bringing it back to Chris Lasoya, nobody wants to make a mistake anymore. That's the biggest thing. That's why the game is so slow now. That's why nobody's right. really trying to make any big moves, or, or well, how I feel anyway, of this and that, because everybody's too afraid to make a mistake. Everybody now is saying, well, paintball, you know, paintball is all about the team. The team that wins is the team that makes the fewest mistakes. Fuck off. One. I think the, <laughs> I think the team that is the aggressor and 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 yeah, obviously it doesn't make a mistake, but I think the team that can can aggressively play smart on a field and play as a team, but I mean, it's boring as shit if you're sitting back and you're just shooting your gun this way, then you're shooting gun shooting fucking eight hundred pods, doing all this shit. But I, I think if it, if you can have a guy play and sneak up the field, you know, and be aggressive and go up the field and shoot a couple guys with five balls and, and end a match or a point or whatever. That's exciting to me. Not having a guy sit there and just load pods and shoot a lane and do this because he has 200 on his back. It's just, it's just so, it's just so fucking boring now. And I think that's why I'm so pissed is because I played this sport for so long and now everything is so structured and everything is so already planned out and this and that. Yeah, there's a couple good fucking moves during the tournament, but like I, there could be so much more, but everything is so, no, you sit here, you do your job and you do this and you shoot this bounce shot. And then if you get to this spot, you shoot this and you do this bounce shot. There's no creativity anymore. It's exactly. It's, or if there is, it's very, very seldom. And, yeah. and, it, and it kills me. It absolutely and it, kills me. And as an audience, we love creativity. We love to be, we love to be surprised. We love to, we love a, uh, we love to see an outcome that isn't, isn't seen, you know? And, uh, you know who did that? Like I said, Chris used to do that great. Oliver Lang did that great. Mm-hmm. I mean, there were there there's some, you know, great other people. But but like yeah. you said, I think a lot of people are being stifled. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people are being stifled. And all the way to Sunday, it would be creative and exciting all the way to Sunday. But now it's just like everybody says. It's it's you know Friday and Saturday are so exciting and prelims or this and that. And but we know it's going to slow down on Sunday because nobody wants to make a mistake and everybody knows the field by now. You know air quotes everybody knows the field so nobody's right. gonna make a mistake and everybody's gonna shoot their guns until this guy decides to try and gunfight into a lane a ramping well, lane and uh, i think i think they ought to look at it how how paintball is being scored right if if you if you watch and i'm going back to cycling right now but if you watch the tour de france right it's all relatable the, the what well, it is so if you look at the tour de france there's there's races within the race right Mm -hmm. back when i was back when i was racing criteriums we would have a race within the race it was called the preem they would they would ring a bell 
and they would say on the next on the next lap, whoever crosses the finish line first wins a premium. You would win some bullshit like a chain or, or you know, or you know, fifty dollar gift certificate or something. But anyway, it, it was a prize, and it created drama within the race as people were watching, watching this this whole race trying to finish up. Um, mm. And and that was cool. Tour de France, you got you got the you got the the you got the yellow jersey. So that's the person who is the most consistent, right? The one who has the best time, who's going to be at the front all the time, uh, you know, finishing, finishing, finishing as far as, you know, in the GC. So that's the yellow jersey. You got the polka dotted jersey, which is, which is king of the hill. So whoever, whoever there's, there's races within the race. So they'll, 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 um, they'll say at the top of this hill, you get points for, for you know, for a um, being first at for, the top of the for, hill or something. Yeah, for 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 the rain for the um, sorry for the uh, polka dotted jersey. Mm-hmm. So there's people racing for that. There's people racing for the green jersey, which is sprinters, sprinting uh, a sprinting thing. So on sprinting stages, whoever wins that gets points for that. There's also points within the race for crossing a certain area that sprinters will sprint up for. Uh, there's the best young young riders award. Um, there's also, um, I know I'm forgetting one. There's green Jersey, uh, polka dotted Jersey. Uh, there's, there's the most combative. So whoever, whoever that day at that stage they saw was the most combative would win stuff. So they, they need to start doing stuff like that. Like there, there's gotta be other ways. So like, you know, like, yeah, great. You guys won the tournament. That's, that's great. That's like the pinnacle, right? But this, there also was a team that came up with the with the best move, you know, the best move of the tournament, or the most com- combative team, or the most aggressive team. Mm-hmm. Then maybe they got they got eighth place, right? But they were the most aggressive team. They had they played with the most heart. They played with, you know. So there has to be some some way to. Sorry, <laughs> that's all right. Oh, well, they, they do have MVP. They have move into the tournament. They have they have, but they're little. Okay, you get a plaque, but and that's it. And it usually goes to the winning team, I believe. Okay, um, well that's but, cool. That's a step. I mean, that's how how much I've been out of it. But you know what I mean. But may, maybe they could they could add that as far as scoring points as well too. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if someone did a run through and you know sh- shoots four people and then scores a point. Let's let's give them let's give them a point and a half. Let's yeah. give them a point and a quarter. You know what I mean? Or highest Start, score in a game, you yeah. know, against a team or whatever. Or you know, yeah, make it a, you know a tournament within a tournament, a game within a game, or whatever, or whatever. Right, right. Um, that, let, 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 let's let's start let's start giving points to those creative moves to to actually make those things happen instead of instead of like you say, right now the game is set up so that the most consistent team wins, right? Let's let's figure out a way to make a really aggressive team now now score extra points so actually they're they're winning you know what I mean mm-hmm. there might there might be a way of doing that you know who right. knows just just to make it more exciting I, I mean I I know yeah I know I know I look at the webcast from before and and technically they're they're not as good as is what Darren's doing now but honestly a lot of the stuff I see now when I'm there. I'm just I'm just tired until it gets to the finals, and then and then and every now and then there's a good game, but it's just boring, you know. It's not really that exciting anymore. Yeah, I think even with split deck, I, I understand what they're trying to do with split deck of of saving time, putting in more games, constant action. But I think it's kind of done the opposite. Um, I, I think it's kind of dulled momentum, and right. you know you don't have those. Those, you know, following a team, you can't have you can't have somebody just freshly sign into a webcast who maybe doesn't really know all that much about it, and then be able to follow it. You yeah, know, and and be like, oh, okay, I know what's going on. It's not you know, that, that was that that was the one thing. And going back to Heroes for a Day, that was the one thing that I was super proud about that film is I could give that film to anybody, to anybody who didn't play paintball, didn't do anything, didn't do that, and they would they would come away going, wow, that was amazing. I had no idea. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and they would watch the whole thing all the way through. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, that didn't bore you? It's like, no, that like I had no idea. I had no yeah. idea. Because and, the content was good. The content right. itself and the story and and, and Well the struggle, the struggle, the, the struggle, struggle, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Here, so that, watching the webcast, the struggle is trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. Yeah. <laughs> if if you don't follow paintball, um, you know, and 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 that's just the tough part. The tough part of now, and you know, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be the same, especially with how much paintball all these other teams are playing who have the fields to go to and the, and the funds and the means to be able to do that. I don't think it's going to be an equal playing field. Uh, you know, in life, people are going to say, well, life isn't fair. Life isn't equal. I was like, well, I can tell you other teams, it's really fucking tough to try and get practice together with all the guys. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you get a, a cup and a couple cheap medals and 12 grand, which ends up getting split. And I'm not saying it's about the winning or anything like that, but I tell right. you, I'll tell you what, back then winning was a lot more sweeter when you were handed a $45,000 check or whatever the hell it was. I know it was up there though. Um, rather than, you know, just, and even the team owners, I mean the team owners that even if the team owner took that the whole check, I don't know how much that would even cover of the travel expenses and the the equipment or you know whatever it is but at 12 grand is just i think is a slap in the face to all the guys who play professionally who dedicate weekends and and week days like you know the wednesdays and fridays out of their time and family time and blood sweat and tears uh and compete at this high level i think 12 grand is a slap in the face to all the professional players out there who've been doing this for as long as they have yeah i had i had no idea man i, I really i mean I've, I've been out of it for a while so i i don't i didn't know what you guys were getting paid and i'm trying or, not to, i'm not trying not to winning. bitch about it too much but it's it's just you know i'm coming towards the end of my career and it's just really it's really sad to see i mean i've been paid in my career before um but it's. I definitely thought it was going to be somewhere, somewhere else than where it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear you. I hear you. Uh, fuck, I hate complaining about shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still you're still cycling and still uh, and still surfing and everything. Yeah, I'm I'm riding my bike um, more than I'm surfing now. I, I just got out of the water today, but but um, yeah, I, I love surfing. I do. I do. It's just. I kind of, I kind of got back on my bike and, and I just, you know, I just, I just remembered like brought back a lot of good memories, you know, from, from back when I was racing and stuff like that. And, and, uh, and so every, every now and then on the weekends when, when I have a weekend off, cause most of my weekends I'm, I'm at a, at a concert or a festival somewhere webcasting, you know, some sort of concert somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I get a chance, I go on group rides and, you know, try to try to beat up on all the old guys that that are that are still there. Actually, I'm one of the old guys too now. So, <laughs> so there's some younger guys that are trying to beat up on me. So there's, there yeah, always will be. Group group rides are fun like that. You know, it's you, you're like, oh yeah, this is gonna just be a fun group ride, but you know, yeah, the 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 competition in me just kicks in. So. <laughs> So, uh, do you have any advice to, you know, any of the young filmmakers out there who are maybe, maybe a little bit intimidated, um, at you know, all of the, all of the content that is out there and all the good content that is out there? Uh, do you have any advice on, you know, guys maybe wanting to pick up a camera and start filming their paintball journey? Yeah. Um, is, is, I was taught this a long time ago by, um, in a photography course, most, most people who go there to take pictures or, or to, um, to take video, I mean, photography and video, same thing, right? Just, just one's, one's moving. One isn't, uh, most people like, let's say, let's say you're going there to film a, a band, right? At, mm -hmm. at, cause that's what I do now. So let's, let's take that as an, but you can insert paintball into that. You can insert anything you want. Most people go to most people who don't really know will, you know, try to work their way to the front of the stage and take a picture of the band, just like the audience is is, is watching the band member. That's probably the most boring a shot you 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 can absolutely get in your life because everybody now is watching that band from that angle has seen that angle somehow you've seen it everybody seen knows it. that perspective every everybody knows that perspective right everybody knows that perspective so um 
you know, try to sneak backstage and get a shot from the band looking out at the audience. Not many people know that perspective. Not many people have seen that angle. It's going to make it more interesting. Of course, you're, you, you, that's not going to guarantee you're going to get a great shot. You still got to, you still got to frame it right. You still got to do all that. But, but just be really creative. Start looking for like, that was the first thing I would get asked all the time. Like, I see all these photographers like on the snake right here, right here and here trying to get this shot. But yet I see you like by, you know, in the dead box behind there with a long lens on a tripod looking somewhere else. What are you, what are you filming? You know, everybody else is filming this, you know, I'm filming an angle that nobody else is seeing. And that's, that's, that's where I think that's what people want to see. People want to see things that they haven't seen and they want to see it shot well you know, good angles. So that, that's just, just have fun with it, man. Be creative and, and try, try to see stuff that nobody else is seeing, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, I think that's, that's the number one tip that I, I can give anybody that carries over in, into, into either photography or into, um, in, into that. And you don't, you don't need the latest gear and the latest this, that you just, you just have to have a, have a sharp eye, you know? Mm-hmm. And then once once you know your tools really well, then you can work from there too. You know, I think that um, goes right into paintball too. It's like we were saying, like not releasing the layouts. I mean, that creativity and seeing those seeing those lanes and seeing those run throughs are so much more organic. Um, yeah. In, in, in oh, did you back then, back then? I used to walk the fields just like all the paintball players would walk the fields. They'd be walking the fields, and I I'd be looking for the shot. You know, I'd be looking for okay, right here. You know, someone's going to, you know, pop up snap shoot and I can get this beautiful shot here or I can get this shot and get these paintballs, you know, coming at at my lens, but not hitting my lens. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? From from right at this angle, you know what I mean? And I can stand far back, you know. It was always uh, oh, my toughest thing was was just befriending all the refs so that a um so that they would work with me because I was always on, I always shot everything on a tripod, you know, not handheld tripod yeah. steady, you know, everything, everything level, not like looks like you're running uphill or downhill or, you know what I mean? Um, so if somebody, if I could walk a field all day long, find the perfect spot. And then if a ref stood right in front of me, just one step in front of me, they would block my shot versus just a step behind me. So yeah, um, that was one of the, my reasons for coming out with with t shirts and headbands and stuff like that. So I could I could hand a rough a headband and then go, hey, and bark. And... <laughs> you think you could just step just a little there? Oh yeah, for you nothing, <laughs> no worries. You know, all makes sense now. Yeah, that that was that was pretty much the whole the whole reason for all that. That's awesome, man. Well, I would uh, I would love sometime uh, eventually in the future to be able to sit down and maybe even go into a little bit more depth into uh, individual films like the Heroes for a Day and certain shots and everything. I got to make sure the little ones asleep right now. And uh, cool, yeah, he's been a he's been a chaos. You you have you have a DVD copy of Heroes for a Day, right? Mm-hmm. You you know there's there's commentary there's a commentary section on that as well, right? Mm-hmm. You heard that? A lot of people don't know that because they don't they they don't have the DVD. So, <laughs> if you do have the DVD, there's there's a funny ass commentary of I think is, Maddie, Rich, Frazier. Frazier. I don't know who else. I think it might on. be just them three. It might might be them those three. That's so awesome. But anyway, they maybe yeah maybe 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 Davy was in there. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Well, I just want to thank you and. I, no, thank I, you. I am in forever in debt of uh, just the paintball knowledge and, and visuals that you've given me, um, not only in the beginning of my career, but all the way to the end. And Does everybody know your, your nickname, Hot Carl? Hot Carl. Uh, I have, for some reason, I have multiple <laughs> nicknames. Hot Carl, <laughs> Microwave, Hibachi. I, my, yeah, I don't, I don't know why, but, but I, still okay. do, I still have – Weirdly enough, I don't know why, but Monkey with a Gun and the logo and everything has always stuck with me. I've always like had a sticker here and there. I remember you gave me a, uh, a sticker sheet that was. So you, you know, you know the hat you're wearing, turban. 
Yeah. Carbon. They, he actually created that logo for it. Well, not the first one, but the, but the the other one, the cooler one. He he actually looked at my logo and goes, "I can work on that, dude." Because he, <laughs> when he was a little kid, he used to sleep on my on my floor every now and then and hang out and then and then uh, and then I actually uh, introduced him to Brian and all that, and he ended up getting a job with Die. I didn't even think about it. I should have worn my monkey with a gun hat. No, dude. Yeah. You are wearing a monkey with a gun hat just by wearing a carbon so. hat. <laughs> and I still have the uh, I still have the bars, um, the bars M wag, or the yes. wag uh, yep. shirt that's yep. twelve years old that's cracking yep. and everything. I still rock that all the time. Um, Thank you. It's it, no, it's it's been great, man. And I I, I miss uh, you know seeing your stuff. Actually, I don't miss it because I watch it all the time. I actually watch Sunday Drivers on the plane rides over to the tournaments every Damn time it. every single tournament so it's it, it means a lot to me man and i I'm, I'm i'm forever grateful that uh that you have existed in the paintball world or at all in general well cool thanks dude well th- thanks for riding my van dude because i did have some good conversations anytime man i'm always here. all right all right uh, bud have a good one i really appreciate it take care peace see ya Thank you, Pat, so much for sitting down and taking the time with me and uh, and just shooting the shit. I really appreciate it, and I very, very much hope that uh, that we can get together in the future. And uh, I would love I would love to see another Monkey with a Gun film, but uh, but we'll see. We'll see the direction of, of paintball and how that goes, but who knows, man. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much. Uh, big, a big thank you again to our sponsors, PunisherPB.com. If you type in TPOP again, guys, free shipping on all your orders. Check it out and uh, and check out that Spire 3 program. That's pretty cool. So thank you, Punishers PB. Charm City Paintball, awesome headgear. He also does custom stuff. It's all quality work. And I believe all of his runs that he does are like 10 headbands or less. So uh, whether it be headbands or head wraps or anything, it's usually, usually a very limited run. And... Uh, you're getting a one-of-a-kind, pretty unique headband. So, so check him out. Give him a shout. Uh, Carbon Paintball, capital T P O P for 10% off your entire order. Check out all the awesome products over at CarbonPaintball.com. If you guys have any questions about team sponsorship, make sure you shoot me an email, Carl at Carbon Paintball, and uh, Carl at CarbonPaintball.com. Yeah, the, that's the full address, and uh, and we can we can get you some awesome awesome gear from uh from carbon and planet eclipse the sweetest markers on the planet whether it be a cs2 or the new ethan mechanical marker or the gmec or the lv series they have some awesome gear that uh you know the the whole timeline does not lie you know with with the markers that they've come out with and the products that they have it's it's very very cool to see and uh and they're very big supporters of the sport so make sure you uh, you check it all out planeteclipse.com and thank you again to everyone listening appreciate it and also to everyone watching i thank you guys so much you guys are awesome make sure don't text and drive be smart stay alive that's got a bumper sticker or something but really that's why um you know these podcasts are are so important is because you know listening to these and paying attention to the road Instead of having to, to watch it while you're driving or something, just just don't do it. I want to see everybody alive. Please, thank you. Get to practice safe. Get to the tournament safe. Get to work safe. I appreciate you all. Take care. Peace. <laughs>